fantastic today about marching with thousands and thousands of other people, knowing that there was people from Hovis who just won a victory on, the, on that march. There were teachers, there were unemployed, there were people with disabilities, there were people in sort of from the postal workers who were balancing. There was a whole set of workers and people who were unemployed right across this country who were marching together yeah, yeah, against yeah. the scum that were up there in the yeah, centre yeah, yeah, yeah. of the yeah. People who were born millionaires and will die millionaires on the back of the work that we do, which they want to pay us peanuts for. You might know we've not got a single Tory councillor in Manchester, but they just think that they've got a right to come to our city and have their conference here. And our Labour leader claimed that they were bringing £24 million into the city and therefore we should welcome them. That £24 million is spent on their posh hotels and their posh meals and their posh yes. things served by people who are on minimum wage, zero hours and less, and are supposed to be grateful. And I think people in Britain are saying, we're no longer prepared to be grateful for the crumbs off your table. You tell us this crisis is over, because for you there's a little bit more profits in the system. But those profits are being got because you and me are taking cuts in our living standards year after year. And they're in that conference hall now, planning how to rip us off even more, how to take even more of our offers, how to make our lives even worse. It's not going to end, it's not going to stop. And that's why the demonstration was so big today, because they're a snip of, it is not going to get any better unless you stand up and fight. There isn't another answer to doing that. There's no solution. People will have been pleased to have seen Ed Miliband last week say that he's going to axe the bedroom test. Yes, yes. And I think that's fantastic that he did that. But actually he did that because people up and down yeah. the country yeah. have mobilised and marched and organised yeah. to say that they won't come away. That's the story. And I think you can see in the next few months how things could go either way. There's a possibility that things will go horrible and nasty and they will use that scapegoating to get us to turn on each other in the way that they want to. Or we can begin to see and build on the things that we've talked about already in this room. I think we can begin to see more Hovis workers, more future direction workers, people who are not taking just a couple of hours strike here and there, but the future directions workers are now on their 29th day of strike action. The Hovis are on a full week, on a full week, on a full week, off strike, a full week on, and we're not giving up until they won what they, uh, what they were going to get. I think there is a move for people to say, if it takes a hard fight, then a hard fight is what we've got to do and we're prepared to do that. And I think that's not just going to happen. That depends on the likes of you and me. There will be people, some people know their names, who will have argued in Hovis, we've got to do something about this. There'll be individuals who made a difference that meant Hovis were out on strike. We've got to go out, we've got to tell people that you can fight, you can win. We've got to argue that those successes are possible and advertise them so that people think if they did it there, if they did it in Glasgow, we can do it uh, here as well. We've got to make sure that when the TUC call for coordinated action, that we put enough pressure on our trade union leaders to make that coordinated action happen. Because you look, you see there are a number of national disputes in the offing. The FBU have already taken four hours strike and they look like they might take more. The postal workers are balloting over privatisation that will come out. The teachers are balloting. In higher education they're fighting over pay. Something that I think is increasingly felt in everybody who's work at the moment. You're working, you're earning Learning, but you still can't pay the bills at the end of the week and I think that pressure is building and likely to grow and that's why I think we have opportunities at the moment to unite we need to make sure every little person who fights in whatever way gets the maximum solidarity possible so they're not starved back to work and they feel confident and strong we need to make sure that when they try and get to, to scapegoat each other, that we argue against the sexism and the racism. They tell us that the health service is in a mess because a few immigrants come here and use our health service. The real people who are trashing our health service are the people who've taken £20 billion yeah. out of our budget. <laughs> It's migrant workers who 
who kept our health service growing, and it's black and white workers who will fight to defend and save the health service, and fighting each other is a way down the path to all of us losing, rather than, uh, rather than them paying the price. And I do think that we have opportunities at the moment. People who no longer want to live in a world where you have to struggle when you're surrounded by wealth. People who want to fight together. And I think anybody who came on this march today cannot have walked away from it thinking nobody else cares about this. Because often people think, I watch the telly, I hate what they do, but I'm on my own. You cannot come out of that march thinking that you're on your own anymore. Maybe. We are not on our own. Those people are behind barriers because they are on their own. They can't walk around this city because they know that they'll be mobbed if they do. We have to make sure that we deliver on the strike action. And that's why I would say to people, there's a conference coming up on the 17th of October, which is about how to build a strike, how to organise one, where people who've been on strike in the last few months will come and tell us how they did it. How do you use the media? Media. How do you fight racism and sexism at work? How do you link up with community campaigns? We need to develop those skills and build on them. This isn't a what we want to do. This is a how to do it conference and to learn. And I think the more people that come on it, the better we will be able to fight them. Because I do think that if we don't fight them, the place they want to take us is horrendous. We won't have just half a million people at food banks. We'll have millions of people at food banks. They trough right, meals that cost us more than we get for a week's wages in one night, and they expect us to live on nothing. We're not prepared to live in that world anymore, and neither the millions of other people. We have an opportunity now. There is a sniff of change. We have to go out of here, and we have to fight to change it, so that they never feel they have the right to come back to Manchester, London, or anywhere else in this country without having even bigger barriers and even more police, because they're not wanted till the point that they're not here and they're not our government anymore. Hey, hey.